Okay, welcome to our video on related rates of change, which is going to be our last video in differentiation before we move into integration. Okay, it's just another part of calculus. Um, so related rates of change would be nothing kind of new here. It's just a new way of looking at things. Okay, so for example, beforehand, we would have seen that y is equal to x squared. And that means that dy dx is going to be equal to 2x. Yeah, and we've called that the slope at any point, dy dx. So we're just going to call it something different now. It's still the same thing, but it's just another another name for it, kind of. So dy dx, you can also call it, is the rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay? So that's just a new name. The rate of change of y with respect to x, so whatever's in the top, the y, that's the rate of change of, and whatever's in the bottom, the x, it's with respect to x. So it's just a new name for kind of this term we have here, and the reason we're going through it is that sometimes they'll just give you a sentence here, and you have to find your dy dx just from the sentence. So it is really important to know this. So I'm going to do the example of the area of a circle. Okay, so if the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, which is in your log books, where pi is a number and r is the radius, yeah, then da dr is equal to 2 pi r, yeah? So if they ask you for the rate of change of uh, area, excuse me, w or dot t with respect to, no, with respect to or, okay? And w or t means with respect to, so it's just an abbreviation for with respect to. Okay, so the rate of change of area with respect to or, or the radius, uh, I'll scroll that in. You can just say this here, da dr is equal to 2 pi r. So not that you have to learn it off, but just so you understand what this sentence means, because you'll see it in a lot more examples. So hopefully it'll make more sense the more examples we do, but just to be familiar with this way of saying this, basically, that the rate of change of area with respect to radius, that's the same thing as saying da dr. Okay? Um, I'll move on and do the two rules that we're going to uh, encounter when doing these kind of questions. So I'll say rule number one is that 1 over dy dx is equal to dx over dy. And the reason that's useful is if they ask for dx dy, sometimes it can be really hard to calculate it. But if you just get dy dx and then put 1 over dy dx, you can calculate dx dy. And again, this will make more sense in uh, an example. So I'll just go on and I'll look at number rule number two as well. Okay, rule number two says that dy dx is equal to dy du dot du dx, where the dots just multiplied. And it can also be just another way of writing it, that dy d dot multiplied by d dot dx, okay? And that dot just means it can be anything, yeah? So it's the same idea as u, but just the dot means it can be absolutely any variable, whatever it is. And again, this will make a lot more sense once we do um, an actual example, okay? So I'll do an actual example now quickly. Okay, so our just quick example we're going to do here is going to be y is equal to x squared plus 6x minus 4. And they ask us for dx dy. Okay, so dx dy is kind of hard to calculate here. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate dy dx, and then we're going to use the first rule, and then we're going to be able to get dx dy. Okay, so dy dy dx is going to be equal to 2x plus 6. That means dx dy is equal to 1 over dy dx. I have to scribble this in. So that means dx dy is going to be equal to 1 over 2x plus 6. Okay? So if we scribble that in, we just have another example to fit in. So that's the first rule, just a quick example. So it'll make more sense we do more examples later on. The second one then, okay? So the reason you use the second rule is if you, you want to find dy dx, but you don't have dy dx, you might have dy du and you might have du dx. And if you multiply them, basically, you can find dy dx. So I'll show you how now. They're asking you for dy dx, okay? And they tell you that dy dt 
is equal to 7 and dt dx is equal to 4. So this is a really simple example. Normally you'll have to work these out, but um, this is just to show you the principle. So you know that dy dx is going to be dy and then dx. And the reason I'm writing that is it can be anything, These as long as these two things are the same, they'll cancel and you'll be left with dy dx. That's why this thing is true here, that this will cancel with that. This will cancel with this. And we have dt at the bottom here and dt at the top here. So if you put dt and dt, then that's true. So that's going to be 7 by 4, which is equal to 28. So dy dx is equal to 28. Okay, so that example might not make that much sense now, but it's more just to show you the idea that if you have dy dt and dt dx, you can find dy dx. So hopefully it'll make more sense when we do an actual, actual example later on. Uh, it was real numbers that mean something and not just things that picked out of the sky. But just the principle I'm trying to bring, like, get into your head is that these two rules, basically how to use these two rules. Okay, so hopefully that video helped and we'll see you next time.